Okay, before we learn about D3, we need to do a little quick introduction into SVG. So SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, uh, which makes it the opposite of pixel graphics. So when we talk about pixels, you divide up your space into a little grid, and every single pixel gets a certain color, and then you know you end up having pixels in the shape of a circle or pixels in the shape of a rectangle. That's not what SVG does. Um, the point of SVG is to say, we're gonna draw a circle over here, we're gonna draw a rectangle over here, we're gonna draw some other shape over here, and it's a lot like the difference between using Illustrator versus using Photoshop. It doesn't really matter all the specifics of that right now. Uh, you'll just see what happens in a moment. So SVG looks a lot like HTML, uh, where in HTML you have these opening tags, you have closing tags, this is the title tag because it's the title. This is an H1 tag because it's a number one header. This is a P tag because it is a paragraph. It's things like that, except instead of being paragraph tags or H1 tags, it's tags that are for things like uh, shapes or things that are like uh, circles or rectangles, stuff like that. So what we are going to do is first off, everything we do in SVG, even though it's gonna look just like HTML, we have to put it inside of an SVG tag. If we try to use all of these tags outside of this SVG tag, it's not gonna work. In the same way that if we wrote all of this CSS here, some random place in our code, it wouldn't work. It has to be inside of a style block. Uh, if we were writing you know, uh, JavaScript code, it would need to be inside of a code block. So in this case, I gave us an SVG tag uh, and it's just going to go inside. So the first thing we're gonna do, because I you know, threw it in there, is we're gonna start with a circle. So if you say circle, it will automatically be completed with the closing tag there. We can save and then we're gonna refresh and we don't see anything here. Now, all of the time when you are working with SVG, if something doesn't show up, don't panic, just right click, inspect and see where that thing might have gone. Because you wanna check two things. You want to check that it's actually inside of your uh, code. It's one of the elements inside of your HTML. And you then want to make sure it's in the place that you think it's going to be. So if we open up our SVG here, uh, it turns out that we do have a circle there. It just isn't showing up. And that's because when you have a circle, you need to give it a radius. In order to give it a radius, we use the attribute of r, and I'll just say r equals 100. So the radius of our circle is going to be 100. So I close this, because obviously it won't need it anymore. I refresh, and now instead of a circle, I have like a weird quarter of a circle. So I guess I shouldn't have closed that. I'm gonna right click and go to inspect. And so yeah, it looks right, circle r equals 100. And then we see that what's actually happening here is I do have a circle, but most of it is off of the page. So the center of the circle is right here, and you can see that this is the only visible part and the rest of it is not visible. The reason it's not visible is because it's outside of the range of the SVG. So right now I'll say, just pretend the SVG is a canvas, which is a hilarious joke if you know anything else about where we're gonna be going in the future. Um, but so the SVG is a canvas and anything that does not show up on the canvas of the SVG, so the other three quarters of our circle just disappears. So a lot of the time, if you have content that you can't see, it might not be because it's not being drawn. It just so happens it's being drawn up here or over here or over on the right, somewhere that's just outside of the bounds of the SVG. So in order to get this circle somewhere where we can see all of it, we need to move it to the right some and down some. You might think, oh, X equals 200, Y equals 200, this is gonna be perfect, this is gonna be great, I can just assume that I'm gonna throw in these coordinates. 
When you refresh though, it doesn't work. The reason why it doesn't work is just because when you're positioning the center of the circle, instead of X and Y, you're gonna use CX and CY. We're gonna save and refresh, and there we go. We have a beautiful circle right in the middle of our SVG. Now, the next thing you probably wanna do, um, besides change the size of the circle and the position of the circle, is the color of the circle. If you try to do color equals red, it will not work. That's because when you are dealing with vector graphics, in the same way as if you were using Adobe Illustrator, there are actually two different ways to color them. There's the color that's on the inside of the shape and the color that's on the outside of the shape. You call the color on the inside the fill and the color that goes along the border is called the stroke. So instead of setting a color to red, what we really meant was we want the middle of this to be red. So I'm going to change this to fill equals red. Refresh, wonderful. And like I said, this is fill and this out here is stroke. So if we want to color the outside, we can say stroke equals black. There we go. We can see a nice thin stroke along the outside. If we wanted to make that thicker, stroke width equals, let's say, three. And there we go. If you wanted to make a circle that were clear, we can try fill equals none. And then we can see right through to the back, to the background here. Now our SVG has a gray background. That is not how SVGs normally look. The reason why we have a gray background for the SVG is because up here I made a rule where I say, look, uh, I want you to be a block element, so show up on a different line than everything else. I want you to have no margins, uh, but then I want you to center yourself. And additionally, I want you to have a light gray background. The reason I have this is, let's say we delete this line here and we refresh, it's really hard to tell where the SVG is and if the SVG is even being drawn. So it's just a good guide to kind of tell where the boundaries of the SVG is until you're ready to publish, in which case you would end up deleting it. So I'm gonna put it back, refresh, life is good. So let's say we wanted to draw another shape on here. Uh, if we wanted to do a rectangle, it is not rectangle uh, as the tag name because even though circle uh, is, I don't know, I guess, six letters long. Uh, no programmer, you know, we're all lazy. We don't want to type out all the word rectangle, so we're going to type rect. If I save it and I refresh, nothing shows up because think about what a rectangle needs. In the same way that a circle needs a radius, this needs a width and it needs a height. Refresh and save and we see it is shown up here. So zero, zero is different from the normal coordinate plane. Zero, zero, as we've, as we've noticed when we moved this guy here from the top left over, zero, zero is the top left-hand corner when it comes to drawing SVG, whereas normally you think of zero, zero as the bottom left-hand corner. So this becomes kind of problematic when we're dealing with D3 later, but for now it's fine. If we want to move this re rectangle over and down, we don't do CX and CY, we're just gonna do X and Y. And that will move it to the right 400 pixels and then down 300 pixels. And it's just talking about this top left-hand corner right here. Uh, some other elements you might put in here. Uh, you can have a text element. Now, text elements end up getting kind of problematic. We refreshed and we don't see where it's shown up. So if we inspect, we're gonna say, is there actually a text element here? And we say, yes, there is a text element, but if you notice, it's actually just up off the screen a little bit. So when we had the circle, the center of the circle is what we moved around with our CX and CY. When we had our rectangle, the top left-hand corner is what we moved around with X and Y. In this case, with our text element, it appears to be the bottom left-hand corner because it's just off the screen there. 
So let's move the X and Y a little bit to the right and a little bit down. And then it turns out that yes, X and Y, we're gonna be dealing with the bottom left-hand corner. Now there ends up being a lot of stuff that happens with labeling text where you can change whether it's aligned in the center, uh, whether it's, you know, right now we're taking the bottom left-hand corner of this text, but we might do the top right-hand corner or the middle center, or all of these other things, depending upon whether we're lab labeling data points or labeling something on a map or whatever. But for now, just know text is an element and you can move it around with X and Y. Um, yeah, so all of these things can be colored with fill and stroke in the same way that we did with this circle. So for example, fill equals red, we'll then fill in this. If we do fill equals green on our text, we will end up with green text. We can also do stroke on our text and it will look nice and ugly. Um, so generally you're gonna stick with fill on that one. Um, but yeah, that's about it in terms of SVG. There's a lot more that you can do, but it's also easily Googleable. Uh, but most of the time you're gonna be working with basic shapes like this. You're gonna be working with uh, text and finally there is an awesome tiger so this right here um, it looks like an image it looks like a gif or a png or something like this but if we actually open up uh, that's a png version if we actually open up this file right here we see that it is something we can I uh, can't really zoom into it. But this looks like a normal image. If we inspect it though, or if we view page source, we see that it is actually an SVG that has all of these crazy elements inside. Um, path is the element that is most important. It's not text, it's not a circle, it's not a rectangle. A path is the element you use to draw crazy shapes, like tigers. Uh, but because we're not drawing crazy shapes right now, and literally you're going to be completely unable to understand this, we're going to use D3 to write all of those, uh, you don't need to know about paths right now. So we're going to stick with rectangles, we're going to stick with circles, we're going to stick with text, and that is an intro to uh, SVG.